62 suspected immigration offenders arrested. There were studies of local areas where people... So I'd now like to introduce Georgie, Georgie Weems, from University of East London. Georgie's a senior research fellow in the Centre for Research on Migration, Refugees and Belonging. She's currently working on the EU Borderscapes project, and there's obviously lots of convergence with our own project in terms of what we're interested in. And they're investigating the evolving concepts of state borders in Europe. She's also author of the brilliant uh, The Invisible Empire, White Discourse, Tolerance and Belonging. So I'll hand over to Georgie. Right. Thank you very much, everybody. And um, just... Just, just hearing the feedback from the project, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's so important and um, certainly we'll be drawing on it a lot. We're already drawing on it a lot in, in um, developing the research that we're doing as well as part of the EU um, Borderscapes project. Just to kind of um, summarise, we, we came into, into this through, uh, at UEL through being part of this huge um, project which is looking at European borders, both within the EU, between the e different EU countries and, and beyond. And a very, very small part of that um, has been a focus on processes of everyday bordering, which um, we've, we've been um, focusing on in London, and we're also um, comparing some, some aspects of what we're finding in the metropolitan city of London with St. Petersburg and also Barcelona. So there's, there's kind of more going to come out of this, but we're kind of still pretty much um, immersed in it at the moment. Um, but the, 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 the project in London at the moment um, has been in place at the same time as we, we kind of started doing the research as the go-home bans were kind of being launched and as... Um, all of the debates leading up to the passing of the bill that became the um, 2014 Immigration Act were taking place. And of course, the Immigration Act itself um, uh, extended and expanded um, the everyday internal border into more and more aspects of our lives. And this is, this is really what, what this, this talk about, is about how more and more people are be, being brought into being everyday border guards um, and are also subjects of those bordering processes. So just, just briefly, um, the idea of everyday bordering. Um, there is a definition that we're using as part of the project, which is the shared one, which is, which is looking specifically at state borders. So although we're interested in all sorts of other boundaries, it's, it's the state borders, exactly what we've been looking at in terms of um, the everyday um, bordering of the of the vans. Um, we're looking at this idea of bordering or be ordering as an ordering process, a process of including and excluding, but also something which is very mobile, which is which is changing all the time and is reconfiguring um, the border in all sorts of different ways <clears throat> and different places and affecting people um, very differently according to who they are and where they are what their histories are, etc. Um, and that as part of this, the de-territorialised border has become very much more important, as I'm sure everybody here is aware, in our everyday lives. So um, just, <clears throat> just to come back to the Immigration Act itself, and of course, now that we are hearing about a potential new Immigration Act, some of the um, things that might have been held back a little bit in this or very, or, or already very all-encompassing piece of legislation um, uh, are also, it's going to be extended even further. So um, we've specifically um, been interested in looking at um, <clears throat> how, how people who are um, in their everyday lives, in their jobs, or in their roles as, as, as landlords, for example, um, how they have been uh, thinking about or acting out, um, if there's any resistance to, how they're experiencing being made into border guards, or even if they're thinking about it in that, in that particular way. Um, we're looking at, at um, uh, cases. So, for example, um, 
we're, we're trying to interview and to observe people who are part of the same situation, either as somebody who is being subjected to that ordering or who is carrying out those kinds of roles. So, 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 so these are the different areas of the Act which we're trying to focus on. Um, and some, some people here um, might already have seen the film that we've, we've made from the project, which is really about trying to bring all, the, all of this together to show the complexity and the, the far-reaching um, extent of these different border guard roles. So, so when, we're, when we're talking about the immigration, when, when Nehru was talking about the immigration in that clip, she wasn't just talking about immigration officials, she was talking about everyday members of the public. Um, who are also reporting her, or in the case of landlords, and we can talk about this a lot um, later, about how um, landlords are now having to um, check the immigration status, and very willingly in many cases checking the immigration status of people, and therefore rejecting um, some of the most vulnerable. Um, I just, just um, now just want to focus on a few of the different um, roles that people find themselves in with a, with, with a few examples of what people have been saying. But, um, all of the ones that um, I've got here um, are people talking who are around the Whitechapel area and they were, they're talking after the Immigration, the Immigration Act 2014 came into place and also during the process of um, Operation Skybreaker, which was a, um, I don't know if Rita might be talking about that, but that was, as, as some, many of you will know, it was a targeted operation to first to tar target specific wards which were identified as having um, high numbers of illegal workers um, over a six month period. Um, but just starting with the college administrator who um, was, was not the only person who was talking about having got into a job in the 1990s with, with the aim of being an advisor for people going into education in a further education college, Tarhamda's College in this case, um, and um, how his role had changed gradually over time so that, in, so that he himself had become responsible and liable for checking the um, immigration status of people who were being advised on two courses. So he is, in, in that sense, he's carrying out that bordering role, but he also talked about the way that he is subjected to that as well, um, as an employee of the college, but as also as somebody who is trusted um, by the Home Office to be car carrying out that role um, and is, is doing it living in, in fear of prosecution if he, if he makes a mistake. And what he is, is, is saying is, is similar to what um, landlords are saying as well, which is... is um, taking the path of um, least resistance in terms of um, supporting, offering places to um, people who have got very complex immigration cases or the, or the restaurant owners as well, and, um, and, and just acting on the safe side. Um, and also talking about the fact that because it is in Whitechapel, because East London is somewhere which has been um, targeted in many, many different ways, um, through employers and through some of the other private colleges as well, that um, the very well-established further education college seems to have been targeted in the same way from his perspective, the Home Office, not making a differenti differentiation between that college and the private language colleges um, that uh, are close by. Um, so the betting shop employee. So his situation is that he works across 62 different betting shops in East London. He was based in the Whitechapel one when the Operation Skybreaker came um, and uh, he had to have an argument with them about how come there wasn't a file um, in that betting shop which um, supported the fact that this billion a billion pound, multi-billion pound um, betting organisation um, had, had checked all of his details before giving him the job in the betting shop. So he experienced the um, Skybreaker raid. Um, and the point here, linking to the 2014 Act, is about this increase in the civil penalties originally from 5,000 to 10,000 and now 20,000. Um, 
so he had his observations of, of this. He was from Bangladeshi background. He had been a student. He was between his master's and his, his BA. Um, he experienced this. Um, the shop owner next door, um, the grocery shop owner, owner next door, he was also, he was raided at the same time. He was also, he's been subject to a prosecution. Um, he, he, he talked about how when they came, they arrested a customer and they also arrested somebody who was, he, he sublet the front of the shop to people selling vegetables and um, somebody who was standing there who didn't say that he was working there, they were both arrested and he was being um, subject to the fines for being the employer of people that he says are the customer and the, or the other person outside. So he was, um, he was very angry about that. He was talking about how you know, customers won't come to his shop now um, for obvious reasons. Um, and then about the complexities of having to uh, uh, check the visas, and he, he, he talked specifically about people coming over from Europe and not being familiar with the kind of ID that European workers might have and the, the difficulties that that um, poses for him. Um, a final example uh, is the landlord, um, who I've put this in here because she's, she's somebody who objected very strongly as well to the legislation, the way that it had it had come in, as, as she put it, without having had any mandate um, from herself. Um, and the fact that she is, will probably have to, um, once, it, once this legislation moves to London, uh, will we'll have to be checking the immigration status of, of um, people using, using her flats. And she, um, she's actually the aunt of the person who was work, working in the betting shop um, and has got many relatives who are in, in Britain as students and, um, and elsewhere uh, and doing various other things. Um, and, uh, but again, you know, she, she said that this is her pension and when it comes down to it, she's, she wouldn't be prepared to take the risk of offering her property to somebody who she would prefer to offer the property to. Um, so, 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 so anyway, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, start, start to finish off, but um, what, what we're trying to do, as I said, is to, is to identify um, the people who are having to act as border guards, to see and to try to understand how, uh, how, how different people are dealing with this situation. Um, in terms of today, um, I hope that we're going to be able to discuss ways that we can challenge this in, in, what, in whatever ways are possible. Uh, in relation to the, um, the English teachers, for example, the further education colleges, um, I know that there are charities which are able to raise money in order to run charity classes where they don't have to check the immigration status of people who are um, who, who, who are learning languages and, and sort of knowing about those organisations and being able to support those organisations is maybe one of the things that um, we can discuss. Um, but uh, it is definitely the case um, that this, these examples of everyday bordering are expanding across the world within Europe. Our partner organisations um, are showing that as well. It's different in the British context um, in Britain, there are no ID cards for everybody um, yet, which, which um, has no doubt had an influence on the kinds of um, legislations that have been being introduced. Um, but uh, it's, it, it's, it's something that we're all beginning to feel um, more and more. Um, and I, I suppose that in terms of um, managing something that I haven't really spoken about in a, in a large amount of detail, but to think of this more broadly about how these technologies of bordering are being used to manage the diversity that um, we all experience living in Britain today and what the implications of that are going to be for all of us in our different roles. So I'll, I'll finish there.
There were studies of local areas where people protested. You can't believe government statistics on immigration. Their campaign is to cause anxiety within the nation. The big debating was so intense as we all tried to make some sense of the mapping immigration conference.